I have worked with Java since 1999 and after more than 20 years of Java, I am still very fond of the Java programming language. And in this video, I will explain seven plus two reasons of why. Any programming language has a set of design goals, which are goals the language designer hopes to achieve with a given programming language. These design goals shape the syntax and features of the language. For instance, a general purpose language will most likely be different than a specific purpose language. For that reason, Java is quite different from SQL. Similarly, a language that favors control will be different than a language that favors convenience. For that reason, C++ is quite different from Python. Quite often, programming language designers have to make some trade-offs in the language design between different design goals. In order to make these trade-offs, the language designer will typically have to prioritize the design goals. For instance, to prioritize control first, and then convenience second, or to prioritize convenience first, and then control second. Similarly, you as a developer also need to make some trade-offs when choosing which programming languages to learn. When you make these trade-offs, you need to consider a set of factors both within and around the language. For instance, do you agree with the design goals and trade-offs of the language? Is the language versatile enough to be applicable to many different kinds of problems? Or will you need to learn a new programming language when you need to solve new kinds of problems? Is the quality and volume of the documentation high enough for you to effectively learn the language? Are there sufficient IDEs and other tools such as debuggers, profilers and build tools for the language? Is the open source and commercial ecosystem outside of the language mature enough? Is the community big enough, for instance, to hire developers from or to get help from? Does the language evolve fast enough and in a direction that you agree with? And is the job market large enough, interesting enough and well paid enough for you to be worth learning the language? Now that we have set the stage, let me continue to my seven plus two reasons why I still very much appreciate Java today. The first reason is I believe Java has made a pretty good trade-off between control and convenience in the language and the platform. By control, I mean control over the underlying hardware and control over memory usage and performance. Typically, the more control you want in a programming language, the more complex the language tends to become, the more language features you tend to, to have to learn in order to use the language effectively, and the more verbose the language also tends to become, and thus the language becomes less convenient to use. As I have tried to illustrate in this diagram here, it is not that I believe Java provides the highest level of control of the underlying hardware of any programming language that I have studied, nor that Java provides the highest level of convenience. However, Java does provide one of the best trade-offs between control and convenience that I have seen in a programming language so far. My second reason is that Java's cross-platform support works quite well. On a hardware level, Java has been ported to be able to run on x86 architectures such as AMD and Intel chipsets, ARM chipsets and mainframes. On an operating system level, Java has been ported to be able to run on Windows, Linux, macOS, iOS, Android and Raspberry Pi. And Java also runs in most of the clouds, for instance, in AWS serverless um, lambdas and Google Cloud Functions. And of course, you can run normal um, Java applications on virtual machines in most clouds today as well. My third reason is that Java comes with a large set of built-in APIs providing functionality that extend beyond the functionality provided by the language itself. This is functionality such as multi-threading and concurrency constructs, I.O., both blocking and non-blocking, collections, reflection, regular expressions, functional programming, database access, and much, much more. 
My fourth reason is that Java has a large open source and commercial ecosystem around it. This ecosystem features products such as web servers and microservice platforms, databases, big data platforms, AI toolkits, JSON parsers, dependency injection containers, and more. Fifth, Java has a pretty large global community. The estimate is that there are more than 8 million Java developers worldwide, so you have a lot of fellow developers to ask for help in case you run into a problem. Reason number six is that Java is still a very popular programming language. According to the PYPL, Java ranks second in popularity of all programming languages in the world. And finally, my seventh reason is that Java has frequent regular updates. New versions of Java are released every six months and release dates are quite precise and consistent. And each new release typically contains at least one interesting feature or enhancement. My final two reasons for being very fond of Java are due to developments outside the Java language and platform itself. The first of these developments is the Graal VM by Oracle. The Graal VM can run multiple languages within the same virtual machine and even within the same application. So far, Graal VM has support for Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, R, LLVM, WebAssembly, and more are on the way. Graal VM can also compile your multi-language application into a native executable on many different platforms, including iOS and Android. Graal VM also has pretty good performance. I am very excited to see where the Graal VM will take Java in the future. The second of these developments is JavaFX. JavaFX is a great free cross-platform graphical user interface toolkit for Java with hardware accelerated graphics for better performance. JavaFX can run on Windows, Linux, macOS, iOS, Android, and Raspberry Pi thanks to GraalVM and Gluon, the company currently leading the development of JavaFX. JavaFX was previously part of the core Java platform, but was removed from Java 11 in order to make the core platform smaller. After all, not all Java applications need a graphical user interface. At that point, a lot of Java developers thought that JavaFX was dead. However, development continued outside of the core platform and lately JavaFX has made a remarkable comeback and popularity is growing with every new release. So contrary to what you might have heard, JavaFX is not dead, it is very much alive. JavaFX follows a release schedule similar to the core Java platform, meaning that new releases of JavaFX are released every six months. Now it's time for you to tell me what you think about Java. Do so by writing in the comments below. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to watch more videos like this about Java and distributed systems, subscribe to my channel.